Sounds delicious to me, thank you. But kicking it all off this Monday, Mzansi, today we have one of the brightest starlets lighting up Hollywood at the moment. I'm talking about none other than Zuri Hall. She chats to us all about the glitz and glam fashion at the 78th Annual Golden Globe Awards. And also she'll be sharing more about her podcast. Zuri, welcome to the show. Hello, Polly. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. First of all, girl, I'm excited because number one, we are key keying over all the fashion and entertainment <laughs> that went down at the Golden Globes. And secondly, South Africa, Zuri knows my name. <laughs> <laughs> Of course I know your name and I love your work and I'm just so grateful uh, to be able to share space with you and get to talk a little bit today, so thank you. Okay, well, as we just reveling on all this excitement, I just want to find out from you, how excited were you then yet again to be invited to pre-host the Golden Globes? Yeah, I was so excited. It was really a blessing. I love these carpets. I love award season. It's my favorite time of year. This is my, I think, fifth award season, maybe sixth. I can't remember. That's how old <laughs> I'm getting. But um, it's been really fun. This was obviously a different year. I was hosting the official countdown show for the Golden Globes. And, you know, we were virtual for certain parts of it. But then we actually had a lot of the celebrities who were in person in Los Angeles at the Beverly Hilton and also in New York. Um, so it was fun to just see people. Um, there I am, yep, this was my look last night. Um, <laughs> absolutely loved it. Decided to go a little more fresh, fun and, and light. Um, not as traditionally glamorous as, as I might. Uh, Cynthia Erivo was one of my other favorites when it came to the fashion. Yeah. And Jane Fonda, who actually received what you're seeing there, the Cecil B. DeMille Award, such an amazing legacy. And fun fact, she actually wore something that she's worn before she teased and told us you know i'm gonna wear something that you've seen on the carpet before so i absolutely love that you know at her age with her style and her grace she's like if i wore it <laughs> once i'll wear it again and i'll look good both times hallelujah honey listen that is what i'm all about and i love that about certain celebrities which leads me then to the question how then do you think that the pandemic affected mm -hmm. fashion number one you had a virtual showcase a virtual you know fashion show and number two we're seeing um starlets just like that up Upcycling, upcycling old looks. Yeah, you're, you're so right about that. People are definitely using old looks again. People are definitely wearing pajamas on the bottom, not unlike <laughs> myself right now. Um, what was most different about the Golden Globes this year is we had Tina Fey and Amy Poehler hosting again, which we've seen before and we love. They're yeah. such a dynamic duo, they're best friends, they're so much fun. But this time they were doing it bi-coastally. So Tina Fey was based in New York City, Amy was based in LA, and they sort of did this video chat thing, not unlike all of us around the world with our friends, colleagues and family members. Um, and so it worked pretty well. There were a few technical difficulties at times. Sometimes the banter can feel a little bit awkward if, you know, you have a bit of a delay or someone's having tech issues at home. And of course, many of the celebrities were giving their acceptance speeches from home. Mm -hmm. um, Daniel Kaluuya won um, for his role in Judas and the Black Messiah. And there were some technical difficulties, so he almost didn't get to make his acceptance speech on air at least, uh, but they, they figured it out. So we certainly had some close calls but overall it was an exciting night Jeez, you know the drama of it all i feel like i'm right there within the action in the thick of it <laughs> touching base with you zuri yeah. so like tina and amy might be besties girlfriend you and i are besties from now on so i want to find out yes. from you then zuri you know with the high five queen with so many incredible talents though coming out of hollywood at the moment who were you most looking forward to talking to this year and girl did you have any predictions when it comes to the wins yeah, um, honestly, I was most excited to see um, Andra Day win. I just really wanted her to win for the United States versus Billie Holiday. Billie Holiday obviously being an, an iconic um, black artist, especially for her time. Mm -hmm. And Andra actually talked about the fact that she was nervous. She didn't want the part. She was like, please, God, take the part away from me. She said she gave that prayer so that she didn't have to disappoint anyone by passing on the role, but also didn't have to deal with the burden and pressure of taking it on. Yeah. Well, she took it on. She absolutely killed her performance so beautifully done. And she won the Golden Globe for it. So that was a really exciting moment for me. Also, obviously, I was rooting for the late Chadwick Boseman. He was the sweetest guy. I've had the pleasure of talking to him often um, on red carpet through the years. And his his beautiful wife um, actually gave the acceptance speech on his behalf, uh, which was very, very sweet and touching. And I'm sure there wasn't a dry house 
uh, or dry eye in the house, yeah. technically and quite literally, or in the house at the actual award ceremony. So it was really great to see him win. Mm. Well, Zuri, you know, for people like us here, all the way in Zanzi in South Africa, it's people like Chadwick, it's people like yourself that truly do stand out to the rest of us as those you know that are of color, black, loud, and proud, but are honestly walking the talk on that big stage of Hollywood. So, girlfriend, we're definitely taking notes. And as we do turn our attention more to yourself and the work that you do, I want to find out from you, Zuri, how has the pandemic impacted you? And I know when it comes to your career, we are certainly looking forward to that podcast, um, Hot Happy yes. Mess, right? <laughs> Yes, yes, that's right. The pandemic has affected me the same way it's affected other people, you know, I'm no different. It's made it um, a little bit difficult and certainly isolating at the start of last year, you know, as we all sort of went into this new normal. I'm just thankful for my health and my safety, so I have no complaints at all. Um, it's been a blessing to stay safe and healthy in such, you know, difficult and trying times. It has definitely changed the way we do work. I thought that we would be doing less celebrity interviews, but the truth is, I feel like I'm working more than ever in the best way. <laughs> and what's interesting is because these celebrities are in their homes now, um, they're calling us and they're comfortable. They're willing to talk on Zoom for longer. You know, I had an interview with Taraji P. Henson at the start of the pandemic, and I felt like you. I was like, I feel like I'm just talking to my girlfriend on yeah. the phone right now. You know, we had our little Zoom set up and we were just laughing and kikiing for much longer than we would if it was an in-person interview because it kind of makes you feel a little bit more familiar. Um, so work is busier than ever. That's that's a blessing. I just launched my podcast, Hot Happy Mess, uh, in partnership with iHeartRadio and my friend Charlemagne the God's new podcast network called The Black Effect Network. Yeah. Bonang actually has a podcast coming also yeah. uh, via this partnership. And I'm really excited about it. It's all about best life minus the burnout, how to find the magic in the middle of our messes, uh, particularly for Gen Zers and millennial women. Um, and what's really exciting is I'm highlighting real women's stories. I'll mm -hmm. talk to some of your favorite celebs, but more than anything, this is a different space for us to talk about our everyday lives, relationships, dating, family, motherhood, team no kids. And I don't just want to highlight American stories. I'm also planning to, I, don't, I can't give away too much yet, but I'm planning to highlight the stories of real women in South Africa also, um, a couple other countries, because I really feel like we're stronger together. We have so much to learn from one another mm -hmm. and also more in common than I think we realize. Um, and at the end of the day, that's being a woman in a modern world. And so I'm excited to have those conversations yeah. Um, with South Africa, with the States, uh, globally. That's the beauty of podcasting. I love that. I mean, Zuri, you've already mentioned some of our faves, Charlemagne the God and, of course, Monanga. Sometimes I see that banter on social media going back and forth. And, of course, <laughs> then enters oh, Zuri Hall. <laughs> it's all, that's what it's all about. We're all there sitting with our popcorn chest. Okay, you saw that hashtag. But then um, another thing about you, though, is that some, there's something about South Africa that keeps you coming back, whether it's starlets yeah. as well side by side with you, like Abo Monang, and, of course, just the average South African woman. What is it about our country yeah. that just speaks? to you. Honestly, I will never forget the first time that I landed there. At the time, I was a face of E! News. Um, I was doing yeah. promotion for um, E! Africa, and I was welcomed so warmly and truly and genuinely. And I'm from Ohio, and that's in the Midwest in America. And it felt similar to that in a really good way. You know, everyone was so kind and generous with their time. And, you know, th there's a steep learning curve sometimes. My yeah. pronunciation is not always the best, but I'm trying. And so everyone, is, you know, really gracious with schooling me and showing me uh, the country. I'll never forget the first sunset that I saw in South Africa. Mm. I honestly almost cried. Um, the, the rich fashion, the, the boldness of color and texture. Um, I just love the way that South Africans interpret fashion particularly. And we've started to see a little bit more of that on Hollywood red carpets too, yeah. um, which is a sign of the times. And it's exciting because there's so many amazing South African designers. So to start to see um, those trends and those colors and patterns sort of infiltrate LA based and New York based carpets is really exciting too. So Girl. I just love the country. I love the food. The food is so good. And I can't you. wait to get back. No, listen, we can't wait to have you back. And girl, don't worry. We saw that Emmy sitting there just um, oh, hovering oh. on your shoulder. So here I is two. Yulili, yulili, yulili. In South Africa, we yulili. Yulili, yulili.
Our girl, here is to more awards. Here is to us just key keying over fashion and so much more. I know yeah. you spoke about South African designers and we've got one of our favorites, Gavin Raja, coming up at the end of the show. So I hope you stay tuned to Afternoon Express. Now on social media, as we're bidding Zuri farewell, we're saying it's officially a new month, the month of March. And of course, it's also autumn. So what's the one thing that you want to make a change to this season? Make sure you use that hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. Coming up, though, we discuss what are the long-term health effects of COVID-19 with Immuenza.